on Radio 1 FM 90. Spectrum wants to hear your views. You can SMS at any time during the show. Type Spectrum, leave a space, type in your contribution and name, then send it to 7197. Your views, our interviews on Spectrum, Radio 1 FM 90. Hello, a very warm welcome. This is Spectrum on Radio One. I'm your host Edmond Chizit. On Spectrum tonight, our Friday panel reviewing the week. Some of the issues we'll be looking at. Today is International Women's Day, and the Ugandan women joined the international community in marking the Women's Day. The theme was the gender agenda, connecting grassroots women to development. The global, that's locally. The global theme is the gender agenda, gaining momentum. Now there has been a debate about the relevance of affirmative action and whether women who benefited from this initiative are still in touch with the grassroots woman. Today, President Museveni spoke about the need to deal with bottlenecks that still make women second-rate citizens. He also spoke about the marriage and divorce bill that he says must be handled carefully. We we'll talk about that. We we'll also talk about the Kenyan elections. The Kenyan Independent Election and Boundaries Commission say they will announce the results either later today or very early tomorrow morning. Some of the results that we've seen so far indicate that neither of the two candidates has got a 50% majority. One needs to score at least half plus at least one uh, vote to clinch the presidency. The uh, electoral commission also needs to declare results from another 53 constituencies, which have not yet uh, reported or almost 53. There were technical problems at the start, uh, so they resorted to eventually a uh, manual tally. Now, a similar delay and contested results led to violence in 2007, where 1,300 people were killed and 600,000, 63,000, 633,000 This place, some candidates have already considered defeat, Musaliam, Devadi, and others. We talk about the Kenyan election as well. Our guests tonight, Dr. David Mushabe from the Mushabe Monument Company Advocates. You're most welcome, Dr. Mushabe. Thank you, Edmund. Good evening, viewers and listeners. Viewers, because also on the internet, you can see a video of, you, uh, of Spectrum of YouTube at any time you would like to see one. We're also joined by Ms. Peace Chamreku, woman activist and uh, former Secretary General of the National Association of Women of Organizations. You're most welcome, Madam Peace Chamreku. Thank you. Good evening, viewers. We're supposed to be joined by Mamid Kasozi later. He's a lecturer at IUIU and a well-known Muslim cleric. Madam Chamreku, is the Ugandan woman fully emancipated? Um, thank you. Uh, The Ugandan woman is not. Um, it's not that uh, women are the same. We are different. There are those who are emancipated. There are those who are in the process of being emancipated. And um, unfortunately, the majority of the Ugandan women are still not emancipated yet. We have the grassroots women. We have the women who drop out of school. You know, as young girls, they drop out of school because that's not a secret. They, there are high levels of school dropout in spite of the you know, universal primary education, universal secondary education. We have early pregnancies. We have uh, child marriages. And all these cause women to be very marginalized and disempowered. And they are not emancipated yet. So what more do we need to do to resolve? Uh, yeah, just like uh, today is uh, Women's Day, and these are some of the issues that we are looking at. The challenges that we have. Why is the woman not fully emancipated. Uh, you talked about affirmative action. Yes, affirmative action is very important and it put a number of women into positions of leadership but that doesn't mean that they are making a big impact on the grassroots woman. So what we need to do is to have a government that looks at the issues that keep girls out of school to see why don't even some boys, why don't they finish the, the cycle, the educational cycle. If you listen to the results that were released like two weeks ago about the number of students, boys and girls, who started in a primary one but never finished the cycle of 13 years, it's very alarming. And as a country, we need to be worried. And of course, we understand that the majority of those are girls who drop out. And if we have girls 
who are not educated, who have not had education. That means they're still going to be dependent on the men, and they're going to affect the economy. They are not going to be productive citizens. And as women and as a woman activist, that's the basis. I think that's the starting point. We need quality education, and we need the government to put more emphasis on providing facilities for girls to stay in schools and for parents to have confidence in the government and in the school systems so that girls can stay longer in schools and complete the cycle so that they be can become productive citizens and responsible citizens of this country. With the responsible citizens, then you have educated mothers who can take their children to hospitals for immunization. That means you are doing something on health. You reduce the uh, communicable diseases. You have women who have a right to speak out and claim for their rights and most probably that may reduce on the domestic violence because currently we see a lot of domestic violence. So today being Women's Day, those are some of the challenges that we are looking at. There is an increase in domestic violence. Can we link that to the economic situation of the country? We know there is a problem financially, uh, globally, uh, financial situation when people are poor then violence sometimes increases. Can we also link it to education? People not being educated, being redundant, doing things that may lead to violence. And with all that, we believe that women, if they get education, then they can become better citizens in various other ways. So when people are poor, they fight? Not, no, no, no. It's, it, it's not necessarily well, domestic violence. Uh, domestic, so yes, domestic so violence. Because the people don't have money in their pockets. Uh, yes, sometimes, many times, many that, times. that, yeah, that, uh, that is a contributory factor. I will give an example that we looked at um, yesterday as a SIHA, where I'm a board member. This is the strategic initiative for the Horn of Africa, where I'm a board member. And uh, we were looking at uh, dowry as a cause of violence. And uh, an issue came up where, because of, of poverty, a man forced a wife to breastfeed puppies. You well, must have read about okay, that. We'll talk about that's, that. That's poverty. Probably on another so, occasion. Yes, on another occasion. So that's, that's, so. yeah, that's what we, we right, want to, okay. to look at. So Those poverty, are the basically, when they can't give poverty. you flowers, they prefer to give you blows, some men. It's, yes, it's sure. Imam yeah. Kassos has just been as you must welcome Imam. Yeah, Thank so. you. What is wrong, Imam, special Imam? Special. I think this is, it means, means to women to be given their freedom, to be free, because they were born free, they should be free. So the problem why we are talking about emancipation is because uh, they women allowed to be dominated and the men dominated them deliberately because they wish they feel they are men and they should dominate the women. So because of that, there were so many issues that were raised, and therefore people thought, we are born free like you, then why should we? And really, to be sincere, that should be the case, because each of us, whether man or woman, we, I think we share, apart from being female or male, the rest, we, we take the same number of months or days in the womb, Sometimes, uh, men or the other things that come to us, almost the same, same or similar ages. But the problem is because uh, I think women, emancipation equals women liberation, trying to give them uh, space so that they can express themselves. Of course, when you look at the cultures of various nations, of various tribes, of various groups, each of these cultures had its own standards. Okay, so the battle we are in now, what is talking about women emancipation is that it is the hope that we are going to have a standard uh, culture or belief or thinking for all of the people, which is not actually a 
possible. Because even among men, there are some men who need a man special. Oh. Yes. In terms of what? In terms of dominance. They are no, women uh, hit them. Not all women. They are, you see, we, we, even not, you see, some women actually are dominated by women. I have heard if she, in, in this issue you are raising, you are talking about affirmative action, you are talking about, you see, to me, affirmative action was a very good thing. Yes. But see, it was not in, properly planned or properly put in perspective. Okay. What, did, what, I, what I expect and what I have been telling women, uh, uh, women, I mean, activists, if like, I don't want to use that word there. What they are, they are not, it is an abusive word to them. What do you have to call them? The women, human beings, as I am. Not activists. No, but, but we, we call them activists because they have come to raise the voice. When they say that we, this is ours and we should have it, then that's why we call them activists. I want to conclude. I had said, and it's my belief, and I strongly believe, yes. if, for example, affirmative action, for the electoral position that we are specifically to represent women, like women member of parliament or women councillors, I wanted it to be one term so that we can create many women. Yes, but uh, to multiply them. But what are we doing? In some consequences, for the last 20 years, yes. the same woman. What are you doing? You have not helped the women. That is, you wanted to give them term limits. Eh? A term? Why, why, why a term why? limit for the women and not, not for the men? No, I give for the first time, because we are liberating them, we are emancipating them, we are making them, we are empowering them. So when we empower you for five years, then after five years, you should be in a position to compete with the rest. For and then we create a new one. That, should, that is the true emancipation right. and that is the true uh, affirmative action that okay. would make sense. Does it make sense to you that in some of our constituencies, for the last 20 years, it has been the same woman? Yeah. Uh, that's the with the men. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. about rights and equality, yeah. those we need to have equal opportunities. Exactly. Right. So if it's, uh, there are no term limits for the men, why should we say they should no. be there for no. the no. women? No. 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 We need affirmative action. It really needs to start from the grassroots, from the family. Are you as a father giving your children equal opportunities? Do they all go to school? Do you give them the necessities to complete school? Mm -hmm. Do they qualify to go into parliament, like we're saying? And then you find that if a boy, boys and girls are given the same opportunities, maybe you, we wouldn't have to do what you're saying, because the majority of the population would be equally educated and would be equally qualified for different jobs and employments and they would make a contribution not only in parliament but even in other fields in other areas of leadership right. where women and men can e compete equally let's hear from dr david Moshe. what's your own uh, analysis of this emancipation movement in uganda how far is it going? first before you even see how far we have advanced we have to address the root cause of the problem well, by and large uh, uh, we live in a patrimonial society it started during the hunt, hunting age, the early man age. Yes. So it was survival of the fittest. Those who had muscles, bigger muscles, dominated over the weaker ones. That's how actually the, the kings were created. If you defended your clan uh, and you, you distinguished yourself as a warrior, then uh, you had the chances. Then you had the chances even to leave it uh, for your son, grandchildren, and all that. That's how kingdoms uh, uh, evolved. Yes. So likewise. The same syndrome runs in the family. Man has muscles, so he felt since he's the protector of the family, uh, the wife and the children should not question his authority or power, and therefore that has followed us for centuries and centuries to this day. So, if we are going to address this problem, then we have to sensitize the masses. The question is, what functions took place at the LC level today? What functions took place? What celebrations did they have at the parish level, sub-county level, county level? Are you only seeing these big uh, 
functions and the chef operations on TV. Chef yeah. But I think the policy this is, is for the elite. Yeah. The you policy know, is. Let's, 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 let's uh, uh, conclude. Uh, uh, make some few points. Yes, this government has made strides. We have 112 uh, districts. Uh, Automatically, you have 112 women representatives. We have many other women who have contested to you know, um, come to parliament not as women representatives on their individual merit and competed with men and, uh, and defeated them. Uh, uh, we, but how many RDCs do we have who are women? How many cows, DEOs, and other ministers? The people we see, we see uh, the honorables, honorable uh, Maria Chiwanuka, we see honorable. Harupo, you see uh, the Honorable Janet Museven, Honorable Chambadi, then we see Miss Kajin of URA, Mrs. Madichigos was at UIA, and those people are put there, and we wonder whether they have any impact here. What I see on the face of it, Prima Fash, is that uh, young women will idolize them, they want to be like them. But when they go down to motivate, and encourage those kids, the, 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 our daughters. Is it but I mean, uh, uh, just, the, oh, just being in those positions is enough in itself. You think it's not enough? Just to motivate and, and inspire. Is that not good I, enough? I don't, I don't think it is good enough. Being looked up First to. of all, this, this, uh, this is my, 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 I don't know whether it is a, a bad presumption or I might be wrong. The trend in Uganda, you have a big office, but you don't have power. No, oh, really? That, that's, that, 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 even it cuts across even with the men. Yes. <laughs> you have a big office, you have no power. Well, like which so one? many of these women, they are in big offices, and many of them you have no power. You are not talking about, about substantive ministers. You talk about big ministers in the past. Yeah, not exactly. We probably yeah. have yeah. ministers in yeah. substantive positions. Not had a For example, problem. this marriage and divorce bill, the NRM caucus is supposed to be debated on Monday and come up with a position. That's very unfortunate. So basically, As Ugandans, is it fair? It's unfair to exactly. the women. That's what I'm saying. It's unfair to all Ugandans. It's giving some people more power than others. Not only men, but even not only it's not only disempowering the women, but also the men. Because the marriage and divorce bill, for the many years it's been, you know, shelved for over 50 years. I mean, people have discussed this. So when it, when it comes to the house and they say they need more consultations, I mean that is uh, it, it defeats the Ugandan understanding. What do you and now, the and now yeah. putting it to the NRM caucus, <clears throat> what you're saying, are, are they better people? Are they the ones who have a vision, not for the others? <laughs> I know that's, but that's not right. Let's look at the facts of it. How do you want it to read? Um, the marriage and divorce bill. Yes. You know, we are happy that at least it's being discussed. A number of issues have come up. We need to realize that time moves, characters evolve. We need to get the good aspects of our cultures. When we talk of character, Imam, we also look at religion. Religion and culture, in a way, they are intertwined. The respect that used to be accorded to our women, the respect back. that the Muslim, the Quran laws, I'm not a Muslim, but I know when we were looking at all this, when you have your four, four wives, look after them equally, love them equally. Oh, you, know? you agree you know? with four wives? Yes, I mean, it, those are good. That gives respect to, to, to the woman. Imam has so only one. There is no problem. That's also good. It's, it's, it's also good. There, there are many issues. Great look after the family, which look out, which are the concerns of parents. For instance, when you think of a marriage, you think many times of children. So when people selfishly believe that it's women who want to benefit from this, they are missing a point. Because this is a bill that considers a family, if it is the basis, if it is the smallest unit of 
our society which needs to be respected. So it should not be discussed by only a few people. I listen to the president. We are also and discussing it here. And, yeah, and we are discussing it here. Uh, when he was um, talking about uh, Honorable Bokatega, the late, and said, you know, for us in NRM, there are things we don't talk about, about the family. Yeah, but, I mean, a family, if it's the basis of society, why shouldn't we discuss the issues that come out in the family? Issues of violence, issues of children that are not looked after, issues of child maintenance, issues of, of, of health, issues of providing for, for, for our families. How many, you know, when we get violence in homes because of property, because of uh, lack of understanding, when we get parents because of poverty selling away their daughters for as a garden of cassava, we've seen this yeah. in some countries. Let's talk about we need to talk about these things okay. and resolve them as Ugandans, not on a few people. Madam Samuraku, let's talk about the sharing of marital property. How do you think, very briefly, how do you think um, it should be sharing of marital property? Um, people have looked at this from an elitist point of view. Imagine, it's also very important, yes. especially for women who have been empowered, who have worked hard. A broad who have, line, yes, yeah. I want to have a broad line. Sharing of property is real. It's an issue. Right down in the middle? Down from the, the grassroots, I'll take you to a village, a village girl who drops out of school. Now let's look at this village. Yes. How should property be shared in That's what I'm, I'm coming business. to that. Because when we think of property, people may be thinking of cars. Oh, but here I'm, talking about, I'm talking about a piece of land right, where uh, this family has just a piece of land where they can grow their food and that's nearly all they have. Okay. Then this man wants to chase away this wo woman who has children. It How can it be? Give us the principle. Yes. The marital property, marital house and the land for the woman to take care of the children or the man. 50-50. Dr. How should we define marital property? No, marital property really traditionally has been uh, that property which has been acquired together during the existence of the man. Uh, it is presumed that it was acquired out of the common and joint effort of, of, of this union, out of this union. And the uh, legal uh, tradition and, and in many jurisdictions, the properties you acquired before you got married are uh, uh, personal properties. You don't touch. Yeah. But in the church, church when you say, say all that I am and all that I have, uh -huh. I give to you. You, reconcile? you know that happens at that time. I, 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 many I, I, times I even have a mistake in my medical yes. It's not a mistake. Yes. Yes. Look at the institution of marriage in terms of this property. Yes. Oh. So, so, so the the is, that is where we have a problem. So they should not share property. And you, <laughs> if we have this, the whole institution of marriage should be discussed. Yes. When we are going to have a problem. Because this property, even when I have acquired, she has acquired, we have joined. Mm. Okay? Maybe she's a housewife. Because we have not registered a company that oh. I have put in so many shares. That's where the problem is. Let's but we are feeling that we must run. So I'm chilling at home with my crew. The boys are waiting to watch the game on the telly, but the chicks want to go to the beach. So how do we play it? A glance across the room. Eye contact is made. A pan is hashed. People get some sand. Lots of it. The Jeff will take care of the deco, Tim the entertainment, and I the clubs. And so we bring the beach to the apartment. If we can't go to the beach, we bring the beach to us. It's just how we do. It's not about where you're at. It's the difference you bring. Get a fresh take on things. Club is brewed longer for easier drinking. Brewed slower for great taste. Club tastefully different. Not for sale to persons under the age of 18. Uh, I don't. Uh, Auntie P, see ya, my way. Eh? I could tell I'm at the beach having fun. You know, I have free calls. <laughs> I'm basically recording everybody. But don't get to fry, Auntie P. I'm going to get back to you. Oh, and surrender food. Ay, 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 my way. Actually, I'm calling everybody. <laughs> don't get to fry, I'll get back to you. Oh, Musei. Musei, uh, I've just forgotten what I wanted to tell you, but remain on right now. As soon as I remember, <laughs> I'll get back to you. Yeah, my way. MTN, I've
Enjoy free MTN weekend calls. Load a total of 2,000 shillings or more between Monday and Friday. Dial star 188 hash to activate free MTN weekend calls. MTN. Everywhere you go. Uganda Communications Commission is currently conducting nationwide mandatory SIM card registration. Register your SIM card in a few easy steps. Visit your telecom operator's customer care center or any other designated registration center and provide your phone number, a copy of a valid ID or any other valid ID with a company photograph such as a passport, driver's permit, voter's card or a letter from your LC. Information on your physical address or residence will also be required. SIM card registration protects mobile phone users from incidences of fraud, incitement, terrorism, and hate messages, among others. Please note that SIM card registration is mandatory, and those who fail to register risk having their SIM cards deactivated. All information shall remain confidential. Let's make communication safe. Register your SIM card today. Excuse me, what is this 300 shillings on my bill for? That is for the tented candles, madam. And this 100 shillings? That is for the air conditioning. And this 200 shillings? For the blue walls, ma'am. I can't believe this! The right price for what you want to use or ask for. That's why we at Standard Chartered are introducing the Easy Go account, the first current account of its kind that gives you complete control of your banking charges. For more details, visit a Standard Chartered branch or call 0414-340077. Would you like to leave me a tip, please? Spectrum on Radio 1 FM 90. Welcome back on Spectrum tonight of uh, Friday, panel reviewing the week. Uh, uh, Dr. David Mushabe, Mushabe from the Mushabe Norman Company Advocates, Ms. Peace Jamreku, woman activist and former Secretary General of the National Association of Women and Organization, Aribam Itkesozi, Muslim cleric and lecturer at IUIU. We're talking about Women Today's International Women's Day, the affirmative action Uganda has been in the front line in promoting women's rights. We'll talk about that a little bit more than we'll talk about, well, the Kenyan elections. Results are still streaming in. We'll talk about that. Dr. David Moshev, how should property, marital property be shared and how should it be defined? Well, there is a current law right now. Uh, in, uh, marriage Act uh, and, and, and divorce. You know, we have married and divorce. Then we have, uh, uh, we have uh, like about five laws that are governing the well, there is one for the Muslims, there is one for the Hindus. There are six. Yes. Six different. Then customary. Mm. So, the, but uh, right, uh, what I can recall is that um, if there is divorce, the, the wife is also entitled to the percentage. How much is that? Mostly uh, the, the matrimonial house. Most, in most cases, the uh, courts will uh, give it to, to the wife. Uh, but if you are a man of meager uh, means and the only property you have is that house, in most cases you have to sell it and uh, share the proceeds. But if there are children involved, then they will, f they will factor those children in because uh, you built that house probably for your benefit and the benefit of the children. So they also factor those ones in. And court has discretion. They, 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 they look at the the principle of the best interest of the child. Yes, you two people are fighting, but... Uh, the child must be protected. But the, the children have to be protected. But uh, if um, in, the, in the event that one, uh, that uh, the husband dies and uh, the wife is widowed, yes. there is a certain uh, percentage which... which, which there's, which there's a formula. Yes. Yeah, there, there's a formula. And first, actually, even the way the law is, is, is written, the... The first one in line is yes, the law. Right. I think it's, it's uh, if I'm not, uh, if I, if my mind won't betray me, it's about 25 percent. The woman goes 25 percent. 25 percent. The man goes. Then the rest is uh, divided among the children and the other dependents. How, how is that the percentage of what? I don't, I don't want to mislead the public because I didn't consult the law before I came here. Mm. But I know that uh, in those percentages, it is the it is the widow who takes the biggest percentage. I think but in the event that you have like two children or one child, yes. then uh, it, is, it is probable that the child might take more than the mother. Right. So 
I think that's where the unfairness might be. Probably, I don't know whether the, the, the new bill addresses that address. scenario. Uh, I think most of the debate I have had, it is about cohabitation, sharing property, right. if we have been together for so many years. And I think that has thrown off the, the debate to different tangents. Okay. And probably uh, we are missing a lot of yeah. good things in that. But I think currently the members of parliament have said the cohabitation will be dealt with another time. Yeah. It is a reality. People are cohabiting. It will be dealt with another time. My prayer now, is that the issue of property is not, should not be looked at that one is uh, acquiring or wants to get. We should look at what marriage is intended to be. Right. To a place where children are nurtured, where they are administrated, you know, they are, you know, yeah. The I think the, the, one important thing to me, it is very hard for anybody to define what he calls matrimonial ma property. Because it involves very many other things that you need to consider. Right. And therefore, balancing it will be hard. But what I think, what should be genuine, okay, is people to understand that, yes, we have started, but you have been my wife, you have been my, my husband, yes. and then you make a consideration. The biggest problem why we are in this scenario and this debate that is not ending, and they are saying we have debated the, 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 the bill for 50 years, is because of greed. Oh, but, yes, and, and this greed is on the greed. either side. On both sides? Yes. Oh, really? So, I, that's why for us, for uh, me as a Muslim, there is no way you will, be, you will actually convince me to live the way God the Almighty stated in the Quran how property should be this should be in the, in the case of death or in the case right. of divorce. Yes. And then you think that some man should or a woman somewhere will make a law and I will abide by it. Yes. It's not possible. Let's but when it moves to this thing of cohabitation they are talking about, cohabitation is reality. Nobody should say reality. it is a reality. Okay? But cohabitation is not marriage. Unless there is a group of people that have agreed that ours is cohabitation and, and we, we go with it. And I so, think as Ugandans so, so, really we... So, so, so the problem now becomes, that. the religious, the Ugandans will say they are religious. And the religion, whether you want or not, does not recognize cohabitation. Much as it knows, it exists. Right, that is actually why we have a problem. How are we going to overcome that issue? So... And I think that's why it has been shelved. It's not going to come into this bill. We want marriage to either be, uh, you know, in church customary. or in the mosque or customary, so that it's very clear. But uh, customary, 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 customary marriage. Customary marriage. The parents have to be involved. Assent. They there is assent. You involve more people because it's with customs and yes. culture. You involve more people, and it's recorded. We are told it should be registered. Yes, that a man, yes, there is there also gift. That's where we have also agreed that this is not a price. It's, these are gifts that are given. Let's go to Kenya right now. Dr. David Mushawa, the votes are still being tallied. We don't seem to have an outright winner. What's the scenario looking like? Really, apparently, I'm in Kampala, not in Nairobi. Let's take a man's country. <laughs> yes, but for me, uh, I have learned a few lessons from the Kenyan elections. Yes, they have not been concluded. We don't know how the election is going to be concluded, whether it is going to be peaceful at the end, or we are going to have post-election violence. Like most reports uh, of, uh, by observers, they talk about post-election violence. But here in Uganda, uh, I, I noticed, and in 2011, I participated. I saw violence during the election. We had Chiboko squad and all that. I have not seen Chiboko squad see. to bring peace and order. <laughs> <laughs> by, by, by illegal 
members of society. Mm -hmm. you know. The answer is yeah. just as the means. Now, I think they're ahead of us. Edmund, honestly speaking, I've been studying them. I think they're ahead of Uganda. They, at least they are brave enough to try the biometric system. When it fails down the road, they quickly own up their mistakes. They say, mm -hmm. there are some mistakes, we have to go manual. Mm -hmm. Our people here at, uh, thought about the biometric system in 2011 and then they developed cold feet and apparently they had already spent some money. Now, that's why I give Kenya credit. At least they tried it. But, uh, you know, when I was watching the news, uh, some people are alleging that there was a uh, uh, power, uh, there was road shedding in the whole country for like three hours. So, the conspiracy theorists are suggesting that it was done Someone to defeat, it off. Yes, mm -hmm. to defeat the, the biometric system because it would be more efficient. Mm -hmm. They are supposed to report straight from the polling station and they throw, they, they send data, the data. To, to the uh, IEC. National yes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, they were saboteurs. But the, the electoral commission took some steps. What, what other things did I like about the Kenyan uh, system? They were giving us live figures. Imperfect as they may be, but they are brave enough to say, so and so got this from this constituency. Here it is a secret. Why do you want to secret reveal? It is risky. You, 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 you announce Edmund, then, but uh, the powers that be want Mushabe. Or you announce Mushabe, the powers that be want Mr. Chizito. So it is risky. How do you reverse things we have been throwing on the screen and announcing? I give them credit for that. I think they are going the right direction. Uh, they are, they, I have not had any incidents of stuffing, except the, 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 the violence which uh, happened at the coastal areas, and they say that those are secessionists. But here, here um, we, we saw some ballots in the bushes after voting. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> read the cases, read the cases, the Supreme Court cases. Uh, they, 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 they articulate all these malpractices. Except this. However, the malpractices were not enough to substantially affect the outcome of the election. No, 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 bullets were, were flying all over. At least we have not seen that. I think these guys might have the technology of, uh, of rigging, which is beyond just staffing. So I think they are ahead of us, if they can also do uh, rigging in an advanced manner. I think we are behind, we are far behind them. Uh, let's give them credit and pray that there is no violence because it will spill over. There are some areas in which they are ahead of us. We are ahead of them. In you know, some places, some people were loved so much, they got more than 100% votes here. I think yeah. that's what's happening. Yeah. I think as a man who got 100% in his area. Yeah, we need to politically grow up. I think the power is not only being a minister or being a, in parliament, being, you know, we need to grow up as um, African countries and also believe in the systems that we put up. As we talk about, at least in Kenya, they are better than us. Uh, one time I was in Finland where, you know, the election is, is not an issue. Even candidates can, they look at each other to see have you done the right thing there is. You know, we need to be mature and trust our systems and do the right thing. And even people who contest, they should go there for a reason. Why do people want to be in power? I mean, that's the main question to, to me. To survive. Not to, to survive. To, to survive. I think, I think we need to have uh, more, more education to have people to serve. Leaders should serve, but not to survive. <laughs> Everyone needs to survive. And that's why we're talking I, about rights. So people go to the leaders to lead. No, I, no, I think the, 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 the problem is because in our countries, we narrow prosperity to riches, to positions of power. Okay? You even find we, we, we have distorted development. Oh. Yes. You have a country, for example, Gabon. Gabon is called the Emirate of Africa because of oil. Okay? But 70% of people in Libreville, which is the capital, they don't have any, they don't, they don't have clean drinking water. Mm. But they have a lot of money because of that. So, the people here 
bad nickname. Even including those in Kenya, where they don't come to power to serve anybody. They come to power to be prominent. And unless we overcome that, we are not about. So the Kenyan experience, actually, but the only snag that is there is because they have become so sectarian. When you look at the electoral areas and the results the way they are coming, they are so sectarian. Uh, where it is not sectarian it is because they have decided to ally. Otherwise, it has been a battle between probably, I think, the Luo versus the Kikuyu. The Kikuyu, I think, combined with the Embu, the Embu, the Kalenjin, and the, 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 the Akamba. And then... The Akamba is Akamba. There are some individuals who are here or there. This, those, those, those really exist depending, actually, on the localities. Like when one Indian, Kenyan of Indian origin, won a constituency in, in the middle, and it was big news. I, 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 that, eh, they have it, an Indian man. Uh, but it, when you go to Kenya, there are many Indians. Many Indians, many Indians. Very many other things, and they have been there for all their many time. Indians. So there should be no, should no longer be issues. The issue should be what do we want? So what are we lacking? What do we, why do we have this problem? Because we lack what we call social development. Social development. Yes. Dr. Michelle, was it a tribal based poll or was it based on issues? Ideology in Kenya. And how does it compare with our own in that process? Well, I, I mean, uh, of course, other people will, will take a different view. But when you look at the alliances, these are alliances between tribes. Oh. Now, if you ally maybe with, with the, if tribe A allies with tribe B, uh, because problem of tribal survival, don't, don't hoodwink me and tell me this is you, you are not you are non-tribalistic, uh, you are you are a nationalistic and all that. No, you are protecting your tribal interests, much as the other guys who want to protect. But I also tribe. want but to. But you say realize that there. you cannot win alone. The Karenjini Kikuyu Alliance has been there for a long time. Oh, but the the last time we each other the last time. Yes, the, the Kikuyu were in power for so many years. Then the Karenjini were there for 24 years. years. So 23, 15 15 years. Years of Kenyatta, 24 of uh, uh, exactly. Kalenjin, and so then 15 of... is not new. And, mm -hmm. and, and apparently, these are the richest. The, 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 these are the tribes which have the richest. Because they've been in power. Because yeah. they have been in power, mm -hmm. they, they, they are, the access to, to the national pie to the honey is, is more or less... Uh, uh, yes, uh, but in all this, we need to remember survival for who? When you talk about the Chikuyu, when you talk about, you know, is it everybody or it's just a few individuals? I think as Ugandans, as uh, Africans, we need to look at that. Why are the majority of our people are not benefiting from governance? We lack good governance. Only a few people are benefiting. And so when we say that it's survival of uh, a certain tribe, not everyone... You know, you know the problem and even that. here, we need to really rethink that. Yeah, the problem is simple. If it is because we are still in the, er the era of what Obote was fighting, or what he, he stated he was fighting. Mm -hmm. Poverty, ignorance, and disease. disease. Mm -hmm. Okay? People who are in that circumstance, mm -hmm. you cannot... I thought no we way. had a... Uh, 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 transform... What was it in... Uh, transformation. Transformation, oh, yes. you know? Where, where is it? It is, not it is so talking so about... Yeah. You see, talking about something... So what should we do? We really need we, to move we, ahead. We, we should become real. Use these you radios to know, you know, institutions. The, if the institutions are there. Mm. They should be not pseudo. They should be really not given that power. Mushara has told us that the problem is because people are in the positions they don't have any position. Okay? Somebody, in order to take a decision... Position without position. Yes, they first call. Or they first read the opinion of the, the presumed boss. And that is the danger. Until we become independent and we accept and we believe in ourselves. Yes. Okay? The, the, the biggest challenge in third world, in Africa, in, in many, many societies is because of lack of self-belief. People 
So, Imam, don't you think now we need more activists uh, from different okay. fronts? Let's talk about something. Like, Imam is so, you know, what would happen if Kenyatta took it? He's uh, indicted in the ISIS. He's uh, only made that's, that's what I wanted to make a comment on. Talk to us about that. Uh, that left, it's, it, 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 there is a new challenge that is going to come to the ISIS itself. Yes. It means, therefore, Kenyatta. Indicting the sitting president. They have tried to keep the man. Kenyatta is, uh, is supposed to, to, to report in July. Yes. Yeah. His running mate has been put in May, according to the new judge the latest, yes. They have put, they, they want him in May. Yes. But these are the people people have voted them. What have they done? It means the Kenyans. Even if it is a woman and has not won, the Kenyans have vetoed the ICC. The ICC. Mm -hmm. And that, have, that means we could have... Disband the ICC. We could, we could, no. We, we, could have, we, we could have very many other scenarios. Because... Bashir is indicted. Okay. He won't go there. Now, Ch 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 Uhuru, if Uhuru is indicted and is the president, mm -hmm. then some other people will also be like that. It will be done. This is a precedent. They have created a precedent. So, what I think should have been done, what should the ISIS should have been done, it should have expedited the Kenyan case to make it clear. All right. And then, it was because now, there are suspects. And people, somebody will tell you that, yeah, you are talking about the suspect. And we, we, we use the British area that uh, somebody is not guilty until proven. Oh, Innocent. Yes. But, but, uh, talk to us about the scenario there. Oh. Kenyatta is, uh, indi is indicted. He's still getting a lot of votes. What would happen in the scenario? There? It is still trouble in, in Africa. The people we have in the parliament and uh, probably even in the uh, state houses. Most of them are tribal chiefs. So a tribal chief goes to these people said, when they attack me, you are next. When I'm gone, you are the one in trouble. Yes. You see, they are not after me alone, but they are after you. It is the whole group. We are all in trouble. And and Kenyatta played that, uh, that, that, that game. And when the media jumped on it, she twisted it. He said, he, he said, he went to the QQ, he said, don't divide your votes. When the media jumped on it, he said, you know, I was saying, as a party, so when you, when you, Vote the MP, uh, vote the, the president of the party. When you vote the president of the party, you cannot leave out the other uh, the other what the, the MP who's on uh, that party's ticket. But that was a lie. He was saying to them, you as Kikuyus, don't don't do what, uh, don't vote your votes. But what they are doing here, they must have gone and they played on the minds of, of the of their tribes. They said, look, you must send a message to the ICC. You must protect our son. You can't let our son get in trouble. But the cases are there. But they've been reconciled. The Kenya, the Kikuyas and the Kalangis for the last time. Now they've come through. So what are the ICC? Innocent people, people have, re have reconciled uh, based on the directions and the guidance of their tribal chiefs. But because in, uh, in, uh, in developed uh, jurisdictions, what they do, if you have cases in courts, the public shies away from you. Yes. Especially when yes. on each case. They don't shake your hand. Yeah. Mm. Especially when on its face it looks like a strong case. They don't want to take that risk. Can you imagine the kind of gambling that is uh, that has been taken here? Mm. Now, if, if Uhuru is the one announced as, as the new president, yes. can you imagine if, if, is the, if, if the ICC convicts him, what happens? Technology, uh, Skype. Talk to us at peace. Uh, Matakara has been rejected apparently by her own people and there are a lot of women in Kenya. Mm. Let's look at Uganda. Suppose you are Uganda, what would happen? Um, I think we have seen this in Uganda as well. We had Miria Obote uh, who stood. The first we had yes, uh, Betty Kamia who is still trying and uh, really she's she's doing a good a good job. She she's a continuing project. to sensitize the Ugandans to think about who they are and you know think about federalism. So uh, I think for Kenya, the lady says she's down but she's not out. I think the lessons that we get from her trying, you know, in the public debates, the issues she was bringing out about corruption and uh, the way she wants things to be. I, I think it's something that we really need to uh, applaud it. As we talk about tribes, tribal tendencies, tribal politics, here is a woman who is fighting against all odds. Yes. Because as uh, David says, when they say, please don't leave me, we are clansmen, we are tribesmen. You know, 
the women and the children are ignored at that point. And the societies that do not recognize everyone as a resource, everyone as someone who is important and has rights and has a mind to make up, you know, to make a decision yes. that is important, okay. then there is something that is not right. Dr. And the, our politics is really being derailed. Okay. Doctor. I want to make a distinction. You see, running for parliament is different from running for the presidency. Now, when you run for parliament, the caliber of people you are running against is, is quite different from the caliber of people and the who, who are contesting for the presidency. So, uh, Mata Karua was not rejected as a woman, but she was, run, but she was running against a tough guy. She should have started with the governor. Yes. Uh, you see, it, it, is, it, is, uh, it is ironic that she would stand as a member of parliament and she sweeps like 100% or 90%. She says, I want to be president and things change. It is because the, the, same same the people he, she's contesting, and that is the same thing with Betty Kamish. She's she, a big she, she won that Rubaga Ruba yes. constituency. Yes. Mm. She was a wonderful legislator. Mm. The moment she said, I'm going to State House, they're saying against who? Seven, and now the players become big. He's, he's, going, uh, he's going now to the major league, not the minor league. From the pond, so from a pond that, to it, I don't look at it as a discrimination against uh, women. Carol. But the, 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 the team is different. But in my opinion, should Carol should have been, have been president? Talk to us about your own. Sir. No, I, 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 don't, I, I don't know that she should be the president. To my thinking, the tenants have the right to choose whoever they want. To, to the, they are best. That, we should, that, one, that liberty we should be leaving to them. But we must also recall that we have stated here that this is a muscular uh, patriarchal society. Yeah. Whereby people are still looked at, is, is, issues are still looked at. Now, who, if it is a discrimination, did the woman discriminate against a woman? No. It is because sometimes, as he has put it clearly, we don't know what we are voting. And he has said people are voting. The moment you don't vote us, it means it will be easier for us to be handed over. And therefore, what do we do? When you vote us, we yes. have the battery. But, but but the woman, the women should, should trust each other. No. In every country you go to, women are the majority. They should not divide their But when it comes to voting, they vote a man. They split so their vote. I, I think my sister here I think should that also go down and sensitize women and say, look. <laughs> We don't need a country which goes according to, to sexes, gender. to gender. I think that's not right. All right. Well, 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 thank you very much, Nida, dear guest. Dr. David Mushabe from the Mushabe Nomad Company Advocates. Thank you for coming. It's from tonight. Madam Peace Chamareku, woman activist and former secretary general of the National Association of Women Organizations. Thank you for coming over tonight. Imam Ikesozi, Muslim cleric and lecturer at IU. IU, also a woman activist. With one wife, a Muslim man with one wife. Thank you for tuning in. I've been your host Edmond. It's a special will be back on Monday. By then, we probably will know the final results from the Kenyan election. Have a peaceful weekend. Bank of Uganda informs the public that from 30th March 2013, the old series banknotes will no longer be legal tender and therefore will be removed from circulation.